Welcome to another Pike and Shot battle. In this match against Waterhead, I have the Mauritian Dutch army against a Spanish Imperial force. So this is uh, not quite full-on 30 years war style Pike and Shot units, but we're getting there. So Mauritian foot. Pikemen are still armored in this period. Arquebus 50%, not the 66% musket we see later. Pike 50%. They are three points cheaper as a result. Uh, so, the Spanish army is going to have mostly, I think, lancers for its heavy cavalry. Our cuirassiers outclass them, although they are quite expensive. Our arquebusiers will do okay melee, actually, thanks to pistol melee, but impact is ugly. For lights, we have skirmishing arquebusiers and dragoons. So, we are going to have way more units, so the number of men will probably be fairly similar. The Spanish list will probably still be using mostly uh, larger, deeper, more expensive units of infantry. Uh, the Tercios, maybe some later Tercios. They'll be individually harder hitting than my own infantry, but far more expensive. So I can hopefully use my superior number of units to defeat his cavalry and support troops and isolate his Tercios in overcome some of them with concentrated fire there will be casualties uh, if he makes it into melee intact these guys are going to get rolled over even though i did bring some veterans so we'll see how this goes so here's our initial position we won't necessarily stay here uh, a lot of our foot is in this forest where we'll be moderately disordered but it should cancel out the kyle melee ability of the tercios if they do come in here which they probably won't uh so if he plays defensively we'll stretch out our line with our superior number of units and try to get around and defeat his supports if he comes forward i mean great we'll defend ourselves in the woods and behind this rough ground so whether we attack or defend we'll I'll decide that after I see what he's got and where he deploys it. Right, let's see that force comp and deployment. Artillery, early tercios, later tercios, including a veteran unit. Early pike and shot, late gendarmes. That's it, huh? He went all in on the hard-hitting, expensive stuff. Okay, that's probably good news, to be honest. Uh, it also means we will want to hide in the forest, though. Let's turn these guys around for the moment. We'll move back one square. And I want to bring up the fallback text to let them know just how many units I have lurking in there. These dragoons can range ahead. And... Shift over. My racing foot into the woods. And late gendarmes, Carassios to the wing. So, these early Tercios are immune to both rear and flank attacks. The early Pike and Shot and later Tercio are immune to flank but not rear attacks. The early Tercios and early Pike and Shot are considered Pike Kyles, so they get melee POAs based on their percentage of melee armed troops. So 60 Kyle POA for the early Pike and Shot, 50 for the early Tercios, 50 for the veterans, plus 50 for superior quality. They also get a little bit of armor, the pikemen being on being armored, the Arquebusiers are unarmored. Uh, that being said, Arquebus does cancel armor even in the melee. So let's see, armor advantage up to 25. So instead, they would get, I believe, 12 armor advantage against hmm, Pike and Shot units, but these are Mauritian Foot with 16 armor ourselves. So yeah, basically armor is going to be negligible. So 
We'll let him come close. We will range our cavalry out. Particularly our cavalry that can shoot. We can take cover in the woods too. We'll range out, try to take out these two cavalry units, maybe these two artillery units, and hopefully engage on our own terms here. Next turn. They pass our cohesion check. No surprise there. And, yeah, good enough. Next turn. Well, we can prepare to take cover in the forest then you get out we want the veterans to have cover keep threatening this flank move but no we need to do more yet dragoons crossiers and harkabasiers forward work on the noble gendarmes Okay, so are we coming out? Looks like we might be coming out. Shift you over. I might have to take the fight in the open, but let's give it one more turn. Next turn. Still not sure what he's doing. Turn those guns. Turn back around. Shift over here. Shift out. Great. Dragoons. And the cavalry aren't going to be that useful because he didn't bring many support troops. So ultimately what we're going to need them for more than any sad attempts at flanking is a uh, zone of control locking his units from the front while we bring up the infantry to fire. So I think next turn we'll have to accept that it is what it is and we need to advance. Next turn. Let's still dump the veterans into the forest for cover and fill the gap with average quality foot. In the meantime, 
keep lining up those shots and I mean tempting but that would be silly let's keep working our way around line up you can pop out And next turn, we can start pushing this line of foot out. Next turn. Okay, we will wheel these veterans like so and begin the slow push forward. And we could use some more firepower on the right wing, I think. As they come closer, we can fall back if we want to. Let's shift some late gendarmes all the way behind and keep these three to zone out his early tercios. Next turn. And, uh,. Yeah, the, the bad thing just happened. A flanking force arrives. I wonder... No, it's not quite in a situation where it can charge me, but that is very awkward. Yeah, um, damn it, I really want a disruption there. It's not gonna happen. Fall back, shift over, we're gonna need you there. Uh, confront these late gendarmes. Turn, do we dare to tank the charge here? Ah, <sighs> we do. All right, now we really have to get a move out on the swing. Archibusiers against Archibusiers. Crossiers will try to charge the late gendarmes. Dragoons for harassment. Okay. That's what I get for dawdling. Although maybe it would have been even worse had I been attacking when this happened. Okay, so we'll swing out, shift over, bring the cavalry back. Next turn, let's see if we can survive initial contact with this flanking force. Well, that's not promising. Okay. 
and keep that unit distracted, that's fine. I wonder if he realizes just how many men I have. Slip away, set up flank, get around. We can at least threaten rear charges in the later tercios. Assuming we survive impact. Next turn. Fragged, huh? Then let's see. You know what? Just take care of this. It's fine. Hopefully, they'll be back. Good. Now, fire. and charge. And we are up quite a bit. Steady pistol melee against swordsmen, so we're up 100. Take out those guns. And start building a battle line. Third unit to help confront this early pike and shot. Okay. It's gonna get ugly before it steadies out. Next turn. Hmm. Unfortunate. Right, one down. Um, time to leave.
one disruption. Don't know if we'll be able to score more than just the one. These being veterans and all. Nope. All right, you need to continue your flight. Well, the right is gonna go. Can threaten these two later tercios, some sort of rear attack. That's it though. Next turn. Impressive. Blocked my fallback. I will need to change that as soon as possible. Ugh. Yeah, we've got to get them out of there. Work your way behind if you can. And shift over. Fire. Huh, he'll be able to move away and then charge, and there's nothing I can really do about it. Here. Take care of that problem. Then cover against a flank attack. Seems that they're going to hold firm. No drops, okay. Hold firm and bounce off, too bad. Next turn, he'll charge and we'll start falling apart. Next turn. Oh, I thought we would fall back. Huh. Yeah, now the, the bad things happen. The very, very bad things.
Okay, well, turn and fire, turn, fire at a half arc, fire, fire. I could try to do something to save this unit, I guess, but we're going to push on here. You contribute some arquebus fire and push on towards main action. You're fresh. You can take a shot. They have disciplines so they're not going to shoot back. We're going to have to auto break them, which is very inefficient. Curiosity. I wonder what the number of men are on each side. Yeah, so we have way more units and they actually have 3,000 more men. Interesting. Ah, dragoons. Can you shoot at them or move in? Well, let's take the best of both worlds. Start moving in, but get a shot in on the way. Okay, this could go either way because we're going to start collapsing the main line here, but we're going to keep nibbling at the edges elsewhere. Next turn. Nice. Well, that could get a little messy, but they should auto break soon. Ah, oh, damn. Disrupt. Hmm. Let's, uh, oh, that's not my cavalry. What a shame. Uh, here. Keep chasing after them. Fire. Fire. And once again, pour in some fire. I wish they would rally so their musketry would be more effective. Do we pile in? Ugh, gross. Oh well. Term will start circling around with you. That's an auto break for whatever that might be worth. Zone them in. Good. Here, protect our arquebusiers. Pair of flank and keep pushing towards the main action. So, what do we think here? Uh, I am not sure. That could lead to some very bad things. But we do have reinforcements coming in. Next turn. That's the bad thing. Oh, it's the 
terrible thing. Oh, he gets out of danger by doing that. Maybe. Actually, I should still be able to reach him. Steady, but they're going to auto-break. Pretty much on contact. Oh well, let's nab the free flank attack. Disrupted, do we charge? Why bother when we can just frag them next turn? Here. Look more casualties. Um, shift down, we might need the extra unit over there. Shift over to over. Great. Uh, you nap the frag. So now, as a result, they have no melee capabilities because they are fragmented. No Kyle, no Pike, nothing. Very good. Cut them off. Attempt to save our Archivisiers. What a mess. Well, we'll break that unit soon, and then all that's left is he horrifying elite core of his infantry to deal with. All right, we've reached the end, somehow. Ah, that break. Disruption, very nice. And break on the early pike and shot, seals the deal. So, we had an army that was outnumbered in men, but superior in number of units. This probably would have kept being a tough fight had it gone on. We would have auto-broken this unit though, maybe that would have led to further panic on these average tercios, and we could have then piled into the melee with cavalry, infantry, whatever. The veteran and tercio viejo over here would have been really hard to deal with. We would have just had to keep harassing them with fire, especially from these woods, and trying to auto-break them. But more or less as I planned at this point, his support troops that were outnumbered had been driven off, and we held on for, well, held on might be a, a bit of an exaggeration, but we haven't finished getting ourselves massacred here. So that now we have supports from both wings swinging in for this round, and it would be tough if it went on, but I think we would have it. So, you know, this is an early stage in the quintessential pike and shot units. These are half arquebus, half pike. The later standard pike and shot units are two thirds musket, so they're longer ranged, and one third pike. Uh, which, in terms of game capabilities, basically means more firepower for no less melee power. The proportion of pike, once it's under Kyle and once it's under late tercio status it really doesn't affect how the mechanics work it's more a reflection of 
what they could get away with in terms of protecting the unit from cavalry. So here we're half pike. Uh, by the Thirty Years' War era, we're at one-third pike. By the late 17th century, a lot of the musketeers are armed with socket bayonets, so they can get away with 20% pike. Uh, which just means more firepower and the same melee capability as these half pike Mauritian foot. So, a good game to water at. Till next time.